today on Steampunk Minecraft. The airship, the crown jewel of our flying fleet. We're gonna go through a lot of balloons and a lot of new technology. I mean, what else is there to say? It's an airship. How can it get any better than that? This is episode 11 of Steampunk Minecraft. You wanna play mod packs with friends, but you can't seem to find a good server. And the free ones? With the big mod packs these days, free servers are just too laggy. Luckily for you, there's Bisect Hosting. They host my server, and with plenty of affordable options, they can host your server too. And the best part is, they support almost every mod pack. Use code Double Sal at checkout for 25% off your first order. Bisect Hosting, a great site for great servers. It just occurred to me that our airship is, well, you know, kinda small. And while it gets the job done, I can't help but feel that there's something better we can use. And there is. I added something new to our steampunk world. The Eureka mod is something special, because it can add actual physics to your builds, which is useful for vehicles. And the first step to getting a vehicle is by crafting an oak helm, which is essentially the brain of your blimp or boat. Whatever it is you're making, you need a helm to steer it. Now seeing how this is my first time using this mod, I decided to try something small. A little water raft, just to see if this is gonna work. All you have to do is click the helm, press assemble, and boom! Your build comes to life. You see how the raft is just bobbing in the water? That is amazing. Now don't be fooled by its jittery movement. That was just simply because I was too close to my create mod factories. The further I got away, the smoother the ride got. And I'm not gonna lie, it does take some time to get the steering down. It's not perfect, but when you're able to figure it out, it's so fun. But it was time to stop messing around. So I waved goodbye to my first boat and began making plans. I was gonna need a lot of balloons. The balloons could make your vehicles float, but they weren't very fast unless you had an engine. Things were about to get real interesting. I ran back to the raft to start making some much needed modifications to that sad piece of driftwood. I began by placing balloons on the sides, and as soon as I did that, the platform, it began to float. I got out of the water, hopped onto the raft, and began placing balloons on the other side. With the raft finally being balanced with balloons on both sides, it was time to make my ascent. Although I couldn't go too high without an oxygen tank, so that was one thing I had to be mindful of. But anyways, I call this prototype Magic Carpet, and yes, I just came up with that right now. I wanted to keep experimenting with the Eureka mod, so I crafted an engine, attached it to the back, and it basically doubled the speed of the platform. By the time I had descended back to the ground, I finally fully understood the potential of this mod. The things I could build, the possibilities were limitless. I began reshaping the raft to resemble that of a boat. I was gonna build your traditional steampunk airship, but before I could do that, I wanted to make a prototype. Now you're gonna have to cut me some slack. You see, boats and balloons, they both have round surfaces, and when you're playing in a game of cubes, it is difficult to recreate those round surfaces. But I digress. Our main goal was to see if this thing was actually gonna work. Up until now, we had just built platforms. Does the Eureka mod have what it takes to move actual structures? The answer is an astounding yes. Once again, we had liftoff. Only this time, we weren't flying on some magic cardboard. This was an actual airship. Well, it was more of an airboat, but you get the idea. I took the airship back to the main base and made a proper landing at the airport. Now, here is the main goal for this video. That airship that we just made, like I said, it was a prototype, a much smaller version of something I want to make. But before I could build it, it only seemed right to extend the runway. Now, airships don't need runways, but regardless, this thing was going to be huge and it needed a place to land. Thankfully, I had the power of my mining drill to clear out all the dirt. Now that I had finally extended the runway, it was time to build a platform where you could actually board the airship. So, I quickly threw something together made out of acacia logs and wood slabs. But, I got carried away, and all of a sudden I found myself constructing these massive towers. Now, my subconscious was probably thinking that if this airship is truly going to be as big as I think it will, then they're going to need towers, the passengers are going to need a means of actually getting up there. But the bridge was way too high up for the average person to climb, so we were going to have to invent something new, something groundbreaking. We were going to invent the elevator. Now, in the past, we'd use a rope pulley. Now, there is a brand new elevator block. It covers all of the elevator essentials. 
traveling from floor to floor, having automatic doors open. There's even a way to get it to travel from whatever floor you want, simply with the push of a button. I began crafting the essential components for the elevator block. The block itself, along with some of the connectors that allowed it to travel between floor to floor. It did require a few items, but in the end it was going to be worth it. It makes life so much easier, you'll see what I mean when we install it. But anyways, I began building a simple elevator cage. It wasn't anything spectacular, just a simple lift to get us from point A to point B. Now once all of the blocks were set in place, the only thing left to do was to bring it all together by using glue. Once the glue had attached all the blocks and they were fused into one structure, it was simply a matter of figuring out how to get it lifted up to the next level. That was a little tricky, but I was eventually able to figure it out, and when I did, well, just watch this. Wasn't that amazing? I love when things work the first try, and guess what? The elevator not only goes up, but it also goes back down. Yes, friends, it's the little victories that make this Let's Play the fun experience that it is. Anyways, now that the elevator was finally working, it was time to make a very nice exterior. And check this out. I go into the elevator, I open the door, close the door, but it stays open, I press the button, and it closes on its own. And when it gets to the top floor, the door opens on its own again. You guys, I know I'm freaking out over these little features, but it's just so cool to have this in Minecraft. With the main mechanical issues out of the way, it was finally time to start having some fun and add detail to the area. In the end, this is what I ended up with for the lobby of the elevator. Back on the upper level, I began adding details to the towers. And then I had the great idea of actually splitting the bridge into two parts. So, I began carving out a space. And when that was done, I hopped over to the creative world and began designing my grand vessel. Of all the structures we made in our steampunk world, this one was going to be the largest one yet. I transferred the blueprints over and did my best to place this massive monster between these two towers. With the cannon all set up, it was only a matter of time before the ship would finally be brought from dream to reality. Eventually, the first deck was complete, so I decided to do a little walk around to see how it was looking on the inside. I kept working on the towers, finishing the roof while the cannon kept building the airship. I ended up adding a lot more detail to the towers, pipes, fences, iron bars, anything to make this place look beautiful. One of the last little add-ons I had to add was a safety measure as well as a beauty one. I needed to add lights, that way mobs wouldn't spawn, and I was just so happy with the way it turned out. And by this point, the ship was finally starting to look like a ship. I've said it before, and I will say it again. The schematic cannon is a godsend. I love being able to build one thing while a machine builds something else for me. Speaking of the schematic cannon, I was gonna have to craft another one because I was going to build a second tower. Well, not really. You see, I already had a second tower, but I just didn't feel like adding all of the details that I did to the first tower. Why not just have the cannon do it for me? After scanning the first tower with my blueprint, I began setting up the second cannon. But the first cannon had run out of materials. It needed red balloons. I was also going to have to craft regular balloons because the cannon was running out of those too. So, I went to the one place where I knew I had lots of sugarcane to make paper, that being the cake factory. There was a ton of excess sugarcane that wasn't being processed yet, so I repurposed it for the paper needed to make the balloons. Once I had crafted enough of those blocks, it was simply a matter of going out into the wild and finding red flowers. Once I had collected more than enough flowers, I went back to the building area only to see what the back of the ship looked like. From down on the ground level, you could really get a sense of the scale. I crafted a lot of red balloons, and when I ran out of dye, I remembered that you could actually spam flowers with bone meal to duplicate them. I was also going to need a lot of wool, so I went to activate an old machine of ours to collect twine. But the twine, I was going to use it to make wool. I was going to have the twine mixed together in a basin to make string, but I forgot that I had a valve activated, so the basin filled with lava. Once I turned the valve off, everything worked fine. Now the reason I needed the wool was because the actual airship balloon itself wasn't going to be made out of the balloon blocks. It was going to be a mix of balloon blocks and wool blocks. I also needed more wood, but mining wood with an axe is just too slow. You recall in the last episode I talked about how we needed to upgrade our tools, so the axe was next. And what was I going to replace the axe with? A trusty chainsaw. Similar to the power drill, when making a chainsaw, it would only craft the base. We also had to make the saw, as well as the other components that would make it run beautifully. When everything was added to the base, 
All you had to do was fuel it up, and then it worked like a charm. Look at that. Cutting through the trees like a hot knife through butter. With all of these new blocks that we had, the schematic cannon could finally get back to doing its job. It continued to fire each block one by one. I wanted to see the progress, so I hopped into the prototype airship to get an aerial view. As you can see, the schematic cannon finally started constructing the balloon. It then occurred to me that that balloon was going to be one big monster spawning area. To avoid creepers blowing it up from the inside, I started placing a lot of torches. Finally, after all of our hard work, multiple redesigns, and a couple of hours watching YouTube, the ship was finally complete. As for the Grand Tour, well, there's not that much to this ship. We have some deck space on the top, and this little room, well, it has a spiral staircase. And the staircase, it goes up to the captain's quarters, which is, well, another empty room. I guess it does have something of a view, though you could get a better one on the boat deck, so... Yeah, it's just something to have here, but not really that useful. As for the lower levels, you could do a number of things with this space. Right now it's empty, but you could line it up with chests, you could put furnaces, anything you want. You could even decorate it if it's a passenger ship. In the back I have a water wheel, and that water wheel is powering the propellers on the outside. But, uh, I don't know if it's gonna work when we assemble the whole thing. And this is why. Sometimes some of the blocks are incompatible with the build, which causes the ship to tilt drastically. Now usually you have to break the block, or you can steer the ship and make it level again. That's what I'm gonna try to do. And I think I underestimated the space I needed. The area between the two bridges is way too narrow, so I hope that when I come back to park this thing, it's gonna be easy. But on the bright side, the ship moves. It's staying together. That's better than our first attempt at making a steam train. So I think things are going our way still. The airship was also way too heavy because it began to descend closer and closer to the ground. This meant we were gonna need to add more balloons. I went back to the cake factory to craft more, and then I decided to hitch a ride on Old Faithful. After all, that was the only way to get back to the airship without having to stack dirt blocks. Yes, even old things can be repurposed and made anew. This teeny tiny little airship was now gonna be a shuttle service. The only question lingering in the back of my mind was, where was I gonna park? It was gonna be a squeeze, but I knew I had room to land in there. And it was a successful landing. Once the airship was finally inside, I went to the captain's quarters, broke through the walls, and entered the main balloon. And there I applied all of the smaller balloons with the hope that this would be enough to lift it off the ground. Yes, the Create Mod thrives off the concept of trial by error, and we were going to add as many balloons as we needed until this thing did what it had to do. It was time for the moment of truth. Could the balloon actually lift off the ground? And we had liftoff! This thing was beginning to rise up into the sky as God intended. Now, the ultimate test. Could I park this thing? I began my slow approach, when all of a sudden I realized that the ship was way too high. I forgot that if you took it too high, then you have to have an oxygen tank. I quickly got into the little airship and made my escape before I died. Parking this thing was gonna have to wait till morning. And even though I almost suffocated in the air, I couldn't help but admire how nice this ship looked, even at night. The next morning was the most difficult, annoying morning in this entire series. I was almost close to parking the ship, like, I was 99% there. But to my surprise, and this is crazy because I did an entire search, there was an invisible block that was preventing the ship from pulling forward anymore. I don't know where the block is, I pulled the ship out, I searched the air, I searched the ground, all over the towers, there's nothing there. But the ship doesn't want to move forward, so I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. But that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like and comment down below your thoughts and opinions. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more content. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. This has been Double Sal. Thanks for watching.